Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI! Let's see what's in the basement of this castle. Uh, it looks like another one of those legendary dragons. We'll just uh, sidestep him here for now. Uh, it looks like even the queen got stoned. Well, now you can love your precious Odin. Forever! What did that do? Hey, hey, all right. Upgraded my Odin Magicite to Raiden. Let's just take a quick look at that. Essentially, the Esper itself does basically the same thing, except it costs a little more, but you have a higher hit percentage, too. And uh, you could learn the quick spell. Same thing as in Final Fantasy V. Two turns in a row, it stops everything. Much more abusive in this game, though, because of the way the commands work. So I'm not going to take advantage of that, but it's something you could consider if you want to. And fight this dragon while we're at it. Blue dragon! All right. Now, this guy is weak to lightning because, well, he's a water dragon. So, uh, basically, when he's aspic, jump, bolt two, and maybe even a good sword tech while we're at it. Uh, I equipped thunder shields on Cyan and Gaw for this battle to help protect against one of his attacks. So, you know, that's something you could do. Obviously, Mog doesn't need it because he's going to be in the air most of the time. Well, I almost uh, took my eye off of charging up uh, Cyan's sword tech there. Oops, that would have been bad. Yeah, too bad I don't have Bolt 3 yet, but uh, Bolt 2 is good enough. And I want to save uh, Terra's uh, morphing for uh, the end of the game now, because we're getting pretty close to there. So. Oh, so that's why he casts Law on himself. Yeah, uh, don't bring Shadow for this boss fight. You don't want to lose Interceptor, I guess. That would have been bad. Yeah, Aspic really is the way to go for Ga. Ga I think there's like a, uh, what is it? There's another Rage that you can get Bolt 3 from. I forget which one it is, but uh, Aspic is almost as good. So why bother? I really don't care that much. Nice thing about the Raiden Esper is that uh, it's basically the same thing as Exo, except it has a higher hit percentage. So you may want to consider using that. Uh, Cyan's Cleave is still superior in hit percentage, but obviously it takes a lot longer to get. So, you can pick and choose whatever you want. And we won the Scimitar from that boss. Let's see what, uh, how that one works. Let's see, where are you? There we go. Yeah, it's a sword for Cyan, I think. Oh, well, a lot of people can use it, but including Cyan. And you can, uh, what is it? Uh, well, it randomly kills an enemy. A 25% chance, I would imagine, if it's like everything else, so... All right, well, that's everything I want to do here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk my way out of here uh, because the warp spell doesn't work. If you want to use Moogle Charm, you can. I want to get some more ability points for Terra there instead of grinding. So I'll just meet you outside and head on out for one final side quest. But before we do that, there's one more weapon that I want to get here at the Coliseum. Now, I could have done this a while ago, but... I've been dreading this battle for quite some time. This is a very hard battle to win. But I can delay it no longer and I need two Magus Rods. So, crap, I lost already. The problem with this battle is that you have to one-shot this guy, basically. And, because I cannot survive two step mines, And he will always counter anything you do to him with Cleave and step mine. Now, I can survive Cleave with massive uh, physical defense that Mog has. That's fine. But I'm going to die as soon as I hit the guy again, even if I hit him multiple times. So I'm going to have to start this one over again. I forgot to mention that if you kill him and you die at the same time, you don't win the item. So that, that's why you have to kill him in one shot, like I'm trying to do here. Okay, come on. Three. Come on. Yes! And now he'll survive Cleaver, and we get hit with a step mine. That's okay, because I haven't gotten hit by it yet. Got it! Yes! And we get the second Megas Rod, so that way we have one for Realm and Strago. So now that's everything I wanted to do here, so I'm going to rearrange my party, and we'll head on to the next area then. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. Let's take a look at uh, my party setup. The only time that you will see multiple ladies in... The, a party for the way I'm playing the game. So let's take a look at it. Uh, basically, you want to have wall rings all the way around. Uh, 
for the next area we're going to be going to. And basically I distributed the rest of the equipment based on their magic evade, so that way everyone has roughly the same amount of magic evade when it comes down to it. So let's just take a quick look at that. Like, uh, Terra has 97, 89, 89, 87. So pretty high magic evade there. That'll be fairly helpful while we're in this area as well. That's why I needed to get that second Magus Rod. I, well, I just forgot about it earlier. So let's head on over to the Tower of the Fanatics. The interesting thing about this area, well, one of the things is that you cannot warp out of here. So if you want a quick way in and out, use Mog for his Moogle Charm. But these are the only people that I've taught magic to, so these are the, that's why I'm using these party members. Uh, all your commands are locked, except for magic. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> that's kind of important for this area. Now, the other thing that's important is you want to... You, well, you don't have to, but it would be a really, really, really good idea to learn Life 3 before you reach the boss of this area. So that's why I've got uh, Terra working on that. Uh, Realm, I've almost got done with Tritag, so I might as well finish that off. Uh, by the way, none of the enemies give experience in this area. They only give magic points, so it's a pretty good magic grinding place, too. Uh, once I'm done with Tritag for Realm, I'll have her work on Flare. That's why I haven't had her work on Bahamut up to now. And then I've got Strago on Raiden, mostly for casting it. Not so much because of learning quick, but if he does, well, so be it. And unfortunately, as a result of the way I've got my Esper set up, um, Salus really doesn't have anything she can work on. The only thing I care to have her work on is Tritag. But, uh, well, Realm is working on it, and she's almost done with it, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, with the three ladies, the way I've been doing it, well, one of them's going to get screwed on the Espers. So, oh well, we'll just try and learn those three Espers, Bahamut, Tritok, and Phoenix. Try to get those three done by the time you're done with this area. And they give enough magic points, so it should be easy enough. And just like Shinra Tower, except more death. All right, we've got a couple new enemies here. Level 20 magic and level 40 magic. Uh, I guess that's the wizards that we're fighting. Level 20 magic is susceptible to X-Zone and Raiden, or instant death. I think most of the enemies here are also, uh, what is it? What's the problem with these enemies? Uh, they have auto-reflect, so you can't, like, cast magic directly on them. So, now this guy is susceptible to mutes. So let's uh, get that on him, if I can. There we go. Yeah, level 40 magic, susceptible to mute, and lightning. So let's see, if I cast Bolt 2 on my, all of my party members, it should bounce off of them and kill this guy pretty easily. You got Bolt 3, so much the better. Yeah, got him. So yeah, level 20 magic, Exome or Raiden. Level 40 magic, use mute and lightning. Pretty simple, seven magic points, pretty awesome there. Unfortunately, we got sprint shoes this time around. What do we got in this room? Magic urns. Okay, now, I forget how we're supposed to kill these guys. Uh, I know it's not like the other one, other games where you're supposed to use elixirs on them. It's something else. Maybe just bounce spells off yourself and hit them? Uh, I was not quite prepared for this battle, viewers. I'll be honest with you. Uh, let's see if, you know, attacking them directly works like that. Oh, well, there you are. I guess that's how you're supposed to do it. Seems kind of weird compared to other Final Fantasy games, but there you are. And like any other Final Fantasy game, uh, they give you a lot of magic points. Uh, if I killed both of them, I would have gotten, well, I would have gotten, uh, what is it? Uh, ten magic points, obviously. So, there you are. And we get the safety bit, the only relic in the game besides a memento ring that gives you protection from instant death. So that can be pretty useful. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's a little floor switch there. I forget how you're supposed to find that out. And we've got some more new enemies. Uh, well, level 10 magic. They are also susceptible to X-Zone or Raiden. Uh, the ghost there is the level 10, by the way. Uh, you could also use life to kill it if you wanted to, but... Uh, oh, okay, well, I guess now I have to use life to kill it, huh? I don't think life is reflectable. So, uh, that should work pretty effectively. Let's see if that'll work on him. Yes. Okay, there we go. Yay! Well, Realm's almost done with that. 
we got a secret room here. With an air anchor, the final tool for Edgar. So what awaits us at the top of this Tower of Fanatics? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy VI! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day. Man, this music's creepy.